Imagine you're driving down a country road and a whole gang of people jump out in front of your car. There's an escaped convict, a toddler, a mother with a baby, a 95-year-old war veteran and a small kitten called Pickle. You can't break or swerve and you're going to kill one of them. Which do you pick? The answer is, of course, you probably won't have time to make a considered judgment. You're just going to react on instinct. But what if you did have time? The technology of driverless cars or autonomous vehicles may give us time to make these difficult choices. And of course, there are no easy answers. The question is, what sort of ethical framework should we program in to autonomous vehicles? To illustrate some of the dilemmas involved, we've uh, recreated here a famous thought experiment called the trolley problem. Down this stretch of track, a runaway train is about to career. In its path are five unsuspecting people who will all die if the train hits them. But there's a switch. It will divert the train onto another track, saving the five but condemning one unsuspecting person to certain death. In essence, you have to decide, do you kill one person who's not in peril to save five who are? So, will random passers-by flick the switch or not? OK, we're, we're going to start it. I'm going to start the train. OK. OK, ready? Train's got... Oh, you moved it. You switched it. <laughs> yes, last-minute intervention. He's going to die. Sorry. You've intervened. I have, I have to. You have to intervene. Yeah. Most researchers find, as we did, that the majority of people will flip the switch. What's interesting is when you change the specifics of the trolley problem just a little bit, you get very different outcomes. If you say, well, instead of throwing a switch, you have to push someone onto the track and, and the, the train will kill that person, saving the five. And people drastically change their opinions. I mean, no, I wouldn't do that, but I can't tell you why. You wouldn't, would you do it? No. Does it feel like a different problem now? Yes. What makes this interesting with self-driving cars is you actually have to encode these kinds of decisions in software. We don't really understand uh, why people are making these decisions, and we don't always know what kind of decisions they'll make in a situation that we've never seen before. That's what makes this so complex. This is not fully self-driving. No, no, but almost. Car companies haven't really begun to answer these questions, but they're still pressing on developing driverless cars. In Gothenburg, Sweden, Volvo are building a production model available now that can keep lane and adjust its speed to keep up with the traffic, a major step towards a fully autonomous vehicle. The state of the art is that cars can drive themselves, but they still require driver supervision. This car can accelerate, brake and steer itself, but I still have to be there. I'm paying attention to the road and have my hands on the steering wheel. When we talk about pure automatic vehicles where the driver doesn't supervise the driving anymore. These cars will drive really carefully. I mean, first of all, they will always follow the traffic rules. They will not speed, they will just follow the traffic rules as good as, as they can. And then they will drive really carefully. They will f have a very good following distance. If they feel, feel uncertain, they don't have enough sensor information, they will slow down everything in order to not cause any accidents. Volvo believes that for the foreseeable future, any difficult moral choices will be in the hands of humans. But what do we do when the computers become all-knowing? It would be possible, for example, if a driverless car has to crash, for it to pick who to hurt, depending on their net worth, whether they're obeying the rules of the road or their supposed value to society. You could say, well, if I'm driving in a poor neighborhood, the pedestrians are more likely to be poor and they're less likely to, to sue me, and they'll sue me for smaller amounts. Therefore, I can give them less of a buffer. I can drive a little bit more dangerously than I would in a wealthy neighborhood. Now, that optimizes your, um, that minimizes your exposure to liability, uh, but most people would argue, and it's legal, most people would argue that it's very wrong. There's no doubt that, as the car company's videos suggest, autonomous vehicles will make our lives simpler, safer and far less congested. Please go ahead. But they'll also force us to address some pretty fundamental ethical questions. Thank you.